news today's news. Is over, but now the real work begins. Western water limits. This is a crisis that we haven't seen in history. Workforce turmoil. This job sucks. We're not getting paid enough. Good morning. I'm Steve Kathan with the CBS World News Roundup in the heart of the Rocky Mountains, a political landslide. By a more than two to one margin, Wyoming Republicans decisively voted against incumbent Congresswoman Liz Cheney. She's one of former President Trump's harshest GOP critics and a key player on the House panel investigating the insurrection. The race wasn't even close. Tonight, Harriet Hageman has received the most votes. Liz Cheney suffered a resounding defeat, insisting to the end that she will never support Donald Trump's lies. Two years ago, I won this primary with 73% of the votes. I could easily have done the same again, but it would have required that I go along with President Trump's lie about... January 6th, that I will do whatever it takes to ensure Donald Trump is never again anywhere near the Oval Office, and I mean it. A few hundred miles away in Cheyenne, Hageman was celebrating. By our vote today, Wyoming has put the elites on notice. We are no longer going to tolerate representatives who don't represent us. Steve Federman, CBS News. Jackson, Wyoming. In Alaska voting, Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski and Trump-backed rival Kelly Shabaka advanced to the fall election. Two other candidates did as well. And former vice presidential nominee and ex-governor Sarah Palin moved on to the general election for Alaska's only House seat. Former Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani is before a Georgia grand jury this morning in the investigation into efforts to upend the 2020 election. Georgia State University assistant law professor Anthony Michael Christ says a larger case could be in the works. Rudy Giuliani was part of some decision-making processes behind the attempt to overturn the 2020 election. And that suggests to me that the DA is potentially pursuing some kind of conspiracy-based charge. A federal judge has set a hearing for tomorrow to weigh arguments about whether the affidavit for the Trump Mar-a-Lago search should be unsealed. Well, the western drought is so severe, the federal government has declared the Colorado River water shortage the worst on record. CBS's Ben Tracy reports that means automatic water reductions for two states. The Interior Department declared a first-ever Tier 2 shortage on the river that provides water for 40 million people in seven states. Arizona will lose 21% of its water, Nevada 8%. And the government is now threatening unprecedented cuts on all the states unless they start using less water. The worst drought in 1,200 years drained Lake Mead and Lake Powell to about a quarter of capacity. We're going to buoy number three. At Lake Powell this summer, we met fishing guides stunned by how fast it's falling. I'm looking at spots 30, 40 feet up the wall where I was fishing just a year ago. If the reservoirs hit what's called dead pool, water wouldn't flow out of the Glen Canyon and Hoover Dams, choking off the supply to millions in cities from Phoenix to Los Angeles. Southern California could lose 25% of its water. Well, Syria today denied it holds American journalist Austin Tice, who vanished in the country a decade ago. President Biden accuses the Damascus government of holding him. In Afghanistan, CBS's MTS Tayyab is looking into the country's hunger crisis. With food prices high and currency scarce. Afghanistan is starving. And these babies are among the most malnourished. This mother tells us her formidable son, Murtaza, is just six and a half pounds. We are so worried, she says. She lost one son already and fears she will lose him, too. Hunger has long plagued Afghanistan. But since the Taliban's takeover one year ago, the Biden administration froze billions in state bank assets and international donors pulled financial support. The doctors here say it's people who are paying the price. The number of people waiting outside of bakeries hoping for a handout of bread is only growing. Each loaf costs just 11 cents, but even that's too expensive for Najibullah, who works as a day laborer. Work has been hard to come by. The Taliban have been in power for a year now. Are they helping you? I haven't received a penny from them, he says. It's terrible, he says. It's a slow death for us. Five minutes after the hour. That's today's news today.